what a deal, what a deal. Hey guys, it's Jax. And I've got a problem. You'll know what I'm talking about. I don't need to tell you all the different stories I've had over the last couple of years, but 
I think almost everyone's had some sort of run-in, at least in our region, with wind energy trucks. Like right now. Anyways, so that th that frame, it was just gonna be too much of a gamble. And I it just, it wasn't there. It would have been a bargain and maybe it would have worked, but I just, I'm at a spot where I just don't have time. I just don't have time. And that, that's part of my struggle just with YouTube in general is time. It's like, oh, it takes so much time to create videos, to film stuff, to try to keep it moving, you know, sending footage back and forth with Matt, who edits my videos, become a good friend the last while. It's just, it's a lot, of, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. Um, and, and we're trying, we're really trying to do a video a week. Sometimes it's a video every 10 days or so, but uh, you guys bear with us and uh, we'll keep uh, doing all we can for as long as we can, right? coming up on the North Platte Nebraska Way Station. I think it's closed. Anyway, so that's the recap on the two trailers we've looked at so far. The one I'm going to check out today, I looked at a lot, a lot of pictures on it, and pictures can be very deceiving, but we came to terms on a deal that will work. Unless I show up and I find something that was like, wow, guys, <laughs> wow, didn't show that in the pictures, I, I feel pretty confident, but we're gonna get there, we're gonna go walk through it, show you around it and then we'll decide if we're gonna pull the trigger or not if we pull the trigger we're gonna hook it on the back and we're gonna fly back to montana because wheat man weeds got a football game tomorrow evening and uh, we got a lot of miles between now and then so let's rock <laughs> y'all it's raining it's raining it's pouring the old man is snoring i'm at wilson trailer in grand island nebraska which is kind of south east nebraska we'll call it southeast cattle trailers galore grain trailers galore and here's mine here it is this is the one we're checking out all right it's a 2008 and I am encouraged already by the fifth wheel plate. I don't see any holes in it, which is great. I mean, this lace got a couple years left. These are very expensive to replace. It's raining, like I say. Uh, another cool thing about this trailer, it's got a lot of lights on it. See, all along the top, bull haulers love lights. Bull haulers are crazy for lights. I look at them as, when I was younger, I loved them. Now that I'm older, I'm like, well, that's just more stuff to worry about fixing. <laughs> that's the true sign that you've turned old is when you're more worried about having to fix stuff. Um, looking, uh, looking good. Let's go get around the back. One thing I don't like, <laughs> so this trailer, the configuration is called a single. See, that's a single tire. It's a single, dual, there's duals there single again okay it's spring ride which means less maintenance little rougher ride when you're empty loaded it's the same difference less maintenance so them spring rides just go and go and go so uh anyway here's the here's the funny thing these single dual singles are made to be lighter so you can put more payload on but <laughs> he's got recaps on this now the reason we don't run recaps on cow trailers is because they're made out of aluminum. It's all aluminum everywhere. And when you have a blowout, it can be very violent and aluminum's not strong. And so it's light, but it's not strong. So you can blow, you know, blow a hole in your floor, blow the back end off your trailer. I mean, it's all stuff you can fix, but it's a hassle and a pain. So when I saw that this trailer had recaps on it, I uh, used that as a major bargaining chip in fact, I even told the 
told him, I said, uh, if you guys want to keep the recaps, it's on consignment. It's not a, it's not one of their trailers here. He said, if you want to keep the recaps, I'll buy new tires here in Nebraska and just have them put on right away. But uh, the uh, guy selling it did not want his recaps back. So should we take this trailer? This is what we got to watch. And they're all, they're all aired up and stiff as a, stiff as a board. But uh, that's what we got to watch. <laughs> that's what we got to watch, all right? Oh, the uh, railing, this is another thing that can wear on these. See here where the rollers have kind of rubbed in. That's pretty normal there. See, uh, nothing, nothing too drastic to worry about. Got a lot of lights across the back, see there? All along the back. Oh man, you're gonna see me coming for miles. <laughs> Let's check out the floors. Ah. Floors, uh, the floors on the back of a cow trailer are always going to be the worst. These are going to be the worst of the worst. And you know, that's still pretty decent traction there. They also put cleats down, which cleats can be a pain for when you're washing out because the spray hits them and it doesn't clean as nice, but it really helps with traction. Uh, it keeps the cattle from sliding and when their hooves slide, that wears the floors faster, right? So I'm not, uh, I'm not too hurt by it having cleats in the back. Um, you'll see a little bit of cracking here. See that? That's nothing to worry about. The floor is riveted down. The welds just seal the floor. They don't hold the floor. The rivets are what hold the floor down. Welds are just for a finishing look. So, uh, really not too worried about that. Uh, remember the gate hinges? That's another thing. Sorry, that's really loud, you guys. So uh, the gate hinges, best way to check gate hinges, grab it by the end and lift it up and down. See that? There's a little play, but that's really, to be honest with you, for a 2008, that's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Um, same thing here. This is the gate that goes up into the top deck. Let's lift it. Oh man, hey, there's no play in that one. None at all. That's gotta be, that's gotta be, that's been redone somewhere at some point. Okay, so climbing up in here, let's check these floors again. Pretty good, I'm gonna call these floors about 50%. It's 50%, let's call it that. Plenty of good traction. Um, for the amount of hauling that I'll be doing with this trailer, uh, you know, be all right. Oh, one more thing. Let's see if this gate swings. This is a crab gate that you use to crowd the cattle forward. Oh yeah, see there? Goes right in. You don't have to lift it. And it doesn't catch here either, see that? Some of them, when they get old, you have to lift this up. Let's check the play on this gate. Totally tight. Totally tight. Floors. Here's another problem spot on trailers. See right there, that one rivet's popped. But sometimes this can start cracking out with his hinges. I don't see any troubles there. A little bit of rot through the floor here, but there's this rubber goes underneath it through here. So uh, that's no issue. That's no issue. Okay, next thing to check. Counterbalance. See that? That's how the cattle get down on the bottom. Very common for these hinges here to be wore out and to have some play in this. So when I step on this ramp, you want to watch for play. You, you know when you when cattle are stepping on here, if it's wore out, you can see these hinges move. And I don't see anything. <laughs> okay, nose floor. Next thing to check for. Hey, look at this, pretty good shape. See these? You guys remember me talking about this on a previous video? This is where you get some cancer. Underneath here is the steel subframe for the fifth wheel plate. And you can get some raw, oh, there's a little tiny. See that right there? Little tiny bit. There's some there. Little crack right there. But see what they did to fix it? They welded a patch over it and then re-riveted. 
um, which is something I'll keep an eye on when those get a little more extreme. We'll do that. But that's very common on an older trailer. Nothing here. And then look there, it's holding water from the rain. <laughs> uh, up here we have a nose deck. This deck goes down onto this level, so when you're hauling calves, you can double deck them. Uh, you know, when the weather's cold and I'm in a hurry, I give a much more brisk tour of the trailer, don't I? <laughs> um, not too bad of, uh, you know, traction left. Kind of middle of the road for the nose deck. But here's what I like too, there's no, nothing's wore out through here. A lot of times there's some cracking from the supports that run underneath this. And then same thing, let's check this hinge. There's a hinge that runs through here, see? No play. No play. Huh. Interesting. Oh, last one. Let's check this. These hinges right here. Sometimes we'll... Oh. Uh. No play there either. Matches work. This is a little compartment here called the doghouse. The floor in there is brand new, which tells me this truck has hauled, or this trailer, excuse me, has hauled almost zero animals in the uh, doghouse. So see this, how it's set up? You bring them in here, load them in there for half of it. Some trailers have a fold down portion where the back half of this folds down and makes like an L shape. But uh, this one doesn't, which, you know, is what it is. Um, let's check the belly real quick. Since we're in here, let's look it over, see what we got. I wanna check these gates from underneath too. See, this is the bottom side now, right? Bottom side. And here's where you can really tell now that it's closed. Man, that is tight. I'll be darn. I'll be darn. See those little grease zerks? You can grease these. That one's missing, but the middle one's no big deal. It's got the outer ones, which grease the main hinge. Check out this little nugget. That's probably locked. Yeah, it's locked underneath. Anyway, that's a clean out door. I see here there's some crack there. But again, here's the thing you gotta remember. That seems sketchy, like, man, you got a big crack in your floor. Like, that's really bad. So underneath this, there's an aluminum cross member that goes under here, right? And another one here. See where the rivets are? And another one that goes along here. And here. And here, you get, catch, the, catch the deal? So again, this crack right here is not a crack that's gonna like fall through the floor. It's all riveted to the cross member underneath. So all this would potentially do is just drip a little bit of uh, a little bit of the poo poo. Oh yeah, so here's a good, here's a good example. This is the underside of the floor up above. Floor is riveted to these cross members. So if there was a crack right here in the floor and a weld, it's just gonna seep a little. It's not actually uh, an issue. Then back here, see they got a couple cleats here for the cattle when they're stepping out so they don't slip. They have flip-up traps with the bar. Looks like that bar got busted out. That's to protect cattle so that if you wanted to open this going down the road to keep it drained, um, this bar would protect feet from falling out. See, check this one out. See there? So this one you could leave open while you're going down the road. Nothing will put a hoof through there. This one, it's a no-no effect. That's something I'll need to fix right away because sometimes cattle can flip this up. And there's another bar here, a cross member piece, but anyway, nothing major. Uh, one last spot. Cattle pots are really prone to breakage right here. Along this, the belly pan on the back, and I don't see any of it. So, what do you think? <laughs> Basically, here's where I'm at, you guys. I'm kind of down to the wire, right? <laughs> I'm gonna get where I can stand up. 
I'm kind of down to uh, down to the wire on this. We're gonna start hauling cattle here like next week. I need to finish this trailer quest. Uh, Cody, who drives uh, the, the Freightliner, that some of you guys have messaged and seen him around the country. You're like, hey, I saw your truck. That's Cody, who's, uh, who's my driver, driving that rig. Anyway, he decided that he's gonna go ahead and come back and haul cows. He wasn't gonna haul cows. He was gonna retire from it. But he decided to come back and haul cows, which is great because he's he's a hand. So him deciding to come back has put me a trailer short. Really put the uh, the pressure on. I was actually, to be honest with you, I was considering just renting a trailer for myself for a couple of months. But I came across this one, and their asking price was so, so stupidly high. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard to say. Uh, the asking price was way high. And so I just said, you know what? Let's think about what this trailer actually is. It's a spring ride, which in the trailer world, very undesirable um, because people want air ride and, and they kind of want fancy and they want new. This trailer is a 2008, which in my mind is not all that old. If it's been taken care of, in fact, my nicest trailer that I own is a 2010. And it's the nicest trailer in my fleet because it's been taken very good care of by Cody, who's been using it. This trailer is a 2008. And I'm actually surprised for its age and being a spring ride that it's as good as it is inside. And I'll probably find a couple things. This is a pretty abbreviated and quick tour I just brought you along because I want to get hooked on. Uh, Weed Man Weeds has a football game tomorrow that I'm trying to blaze back for I mentioned earlier. So anyway, I told him what I want it to be. I said this trailer is not that desirable. It's a spring ride. Like nobody wants a spring ride. It's a single dual single which also is kind of a cheaper end option. It makes the trailer lighter, but they just don't look quite as cool. And as you may or may not know, bull haulers are really into looking cool. Lights are looking pretty decent. There's a couple burned out. We'll have a better idea tonight, you guys. But, uh, boom, baby. <laughs> uh, it's hard to tell in the daylight. These are really expensive lights. They're called mirrored LEDs. They have little mirrors inside there that really reflect it. Very pricey. Uh, these ones, however, very not pricey. Um, like this one, it's more my style. <laughs> Not quite as pricey. Um, there's gonna be a few burned out, but uh, so far, kind of looking like maybe even most of the lights are working. Let's see the flashers here. Oh, look at that. Flasher, flasher. All the middle fancy looking lights, they're all on. Look up above, flashers are working up high. I bet this old trailer here is uh, feeling pretty blue. Our Lazy K that I didn't pick you. You'd have probably been a nice trailer. But I'll tell you one thing, I guarantee, guarantee this trailer, bet they're asking over $50,000 for it. <laughs> probably 60, probably 65 actually. Crazy, for all the rest of you. Not me. Okay. Check out this side. See all these mirrored LEDs? It's gonna look good. Oh, there's one out. No, it's not out. See, look at that. That's an example. From right here, it looks like it's burned out, right? You're like, oh, darn it. Can you get up there? Oh, no. It's in like a wizard. I'm thinking about doing something unorthodox with this trailer now that, it, now that it's ours. It's ours. I'm gonna say it's ours, not mine. It's ours, since you've been on the journey with me. I might think about painting these wheels. That's a different thing in the cow world. Well, look, we even got a, we got an old school 
Oh, incandescent. <laughs> this trailer fits me much more. I'm not a fancy man, as you know. Up there, see we're missing one up high. You know what I should do is just go find another trailer over here and go swipe one. That's what I'll do. Just kidding. I want to sell my soul. Okay. This is that trailer I was just telling you. I guarantee 70,000. It's a 2016, I didn't realize that. I sold a similar trailer this spring for, for that kind of money, so. And it's gone, the market's gone way higher than it was this spring. All right, we got one more to do. Get her up. Pin it. Here's how these fancy little pins work. There we go. We're all good. Another thing too, guys, see underneath here? They're all clean and straight. That means no blowouts. Like if you had a blowout, it could rip these cross members out and stuff. Looks clean. Not bad for a 2008. All right. Okay, last thing. Last thing. And then we're officially rolling. See these right here? This is an airbag that lifts up an axle on uh, one of my other cow trailers that went bad. These are hard to get in Montana without having to order them. They had one here in stock. And that is a new tarp for Cody's grain trailer, the black spread axle that he hauls. The one you see me hauling apples and stuff with, it needs a new tarp. It's wore out, so. I asked him if they had one here. And guess what? They did, so I bought it. You wanna know something even more crazy? That little airbag right there, which is, I mean, it's big, in airbag standards, $425 for that. New tarp, which goes on the top of a grain trailer like that. See, just rolls over the top, $600. Spent a lot of money today, but you gotta spend it to make it, right? Let's get out of here, what do you say? Rock it on back to Montana. left in the old goose. I think these red lights in the old Kenworth, not too bad, huh? So uh, I'm like 250 miles up the road from where we grabbed this thing. I wanna get out, I wanna check hubs, and most importantly, I wanna check these lights. It's very dark out now, and of course I'm lit, lit up, lights are on. <laughs> and I wanna, uh, I wanna see, so let's go check it out, huh? Come on. Cool, look, both of them. So there's two on the corner up there. That, that one's a little dim. But it looks like the whole top row's in and on. Looks like, so then we have this middle row. Middle row's all on. Bottom row. Looks like they're all on. Hey, this is good, y'all. That one, uh, <laughs> you can't see, but I'm checking my hubs now. Cool as a cucumber. It's good. 
All the red lights are working on the back post. All my back ones are lit. That's a pretty impressive old bumper, isn't it? Whoa. Yeah, anyone following me tonight can get mesmerized, hypnotized. All my reds here, good. Okay, let's check these rows again. Looks like we're missing one on the top row, which was actually physically missing. So we know that one's out. Looks like all the rest. There's one at the very end on the top row. We'll check that when we get closer. But all these uh, middle rows are on. Bottom row is on. Hey, that's not too bad. I'm pleasantly surprised. See that one up high up there that's a little, it's kind of flickering, probably a bad ground. Uh, that's good. The old red light can work is good. I want to see what the inside lights are like. Hang on, y'all. I got to get a light. I can't see nothing. How about this? That'll help my cause. There we go. That's the interior lights. So when you turn on the inside lights, it shuts off all the outside ones and sends the power to the inside. Uh, and when they do that, it's a true sign that this is an old school trailer. Uh, because the interior lights are incandescent. They're not LEDs. See how they're just the old incandescents? That's old school natural lighting, you guys. You just don't find that these days anymore. Everything nowadays is LED, white, nasty. This is beautiful and calm. I would say, uh, looks like I have one burned out there. I need to replace the back. Hope this isn't getting you guys all sick. <laughs> Check it out. Any of you old time cattle haulers, this will remind you of the good old days incandescent lights and this is 2008 it's not like it was you know a million years ago but to, to be honest with you i found uh i found that i think hauling cattle they actually come out better with the dimmer lights sometimes those leds are so bright i think that everything outside of the trailer is so dark they kind of hang up i feel like any of you guys notice that hauling livestock but uh the softer ones it's a little bit of a softer transition leaves the tail lights on but that's it that's good that's enough lights to unload old rooster had no lights in uh in his i never even knew what lights were <laughs> on the inside so we'll shut them off see now the outside ones are back on and then now let's see if the porch light works no it doesn't but that's okay doesn't bother me because if I'm having to do anything nefarious in the dark like maybe go buy a scale or something I just as soon not have my name lit up in the dark <laughs> all right well uh, that's all I wanted to see hubs feel good tires are holding up and uh, I'm really happy I got enough lights that I can go right to work with this thing I'm gonna change those tires when we get back um, I've got a load to Kansas with this thing next week. So, uh, anyway, that'll be a good test run for it, but feels good so far. I'm also going to fuel up, up the road. It'll be in the morning, but, uh, I'm going to fuel up and see what kind of fuel mileage I'm getting with this truck pulling this trailer empty. Just to give you an idea, I'm really hoping for seven. If I can get seven, that's really great because that means loaded, I'll probably get five and a half, which would put my average, you know, in the uh, six and a quarter range, right? Is that right? Or have I been up too long? <laughs> Anyways, fuel mileage is the name of the game this year. That's for sure. All right, back to it. Well, good morning. <laughs> it's actually morphed from the morning into the afternoon. And here we are, finding myself very close to home. Yeah, not too bad, huh? Not too bad at all. I tell you what, the trailer's been going good. I don't want to speak too soon, 
but I haven't blown any of these roll recap tires off of this trailer. <laughs> you know, a funny thing when I was doing the, uh, kind of trying to work the deal on this trailer, uh, I told him, I said, look, you just, we all know it needs new tires, like bad. And running recaps, of course, on a cow trailer is kind of taking your future and fortune into your own hands, whatever. I didn't actually say any of that, because that's not at all disjointed and weird. But I said, hey, it needs new tires. So I said, I tell you what, I'll give you X amount of dollars, and I'll let you keep all your tires. And uh, he goes, actually, I kind of kind of threw all them on. They were kind of some, it had good tires on it and I took them off to sell it. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on, that's being a little cheap now, come on. So anyway, I tried to pawn the recaps off and they wouldn't take them. So they'll, they might end up, they got some life. I mean, they made it a thousand miles back from uh, Nebraska. So are they worthy to go on the front axle of one of my uh, hay trailers? Probably so, probably so. Or will I just end up sending them to the disposal? Probably so. <laughs> Anyways, fuel mileage. So I fueled up in Rapid City, South Dakota. And that gave me, I think it was about 400 and you know, something, 10 miles or 20 miles or something like that. And right now I'm at 6.6 .6 miles per gallon pulling this trailer empty. Now, I was hoping for seven. But there's a couple things you gotta remember still, okay? Don't count me out yet. I think we're gonna get there. One, this engine's not broke in yet. I've got 8,000 miles on it. As the engine breaks in, then you'll get more uh, more fuel mileage coming to you. Another little ace in the hole that we have is, I gotta put the tuner on for PDI, Performance Diesel in St. George. I still have a tuning program and a little, you know, it's a little, You'll see it, I'll show you, but it's a little handheld uh, kind of a dash display that will tune the ECM on this engine, give it more horsepower. And when you take more horsepower and you drive a truck like I do, like, oh, grandpa, then it gives you more fuel mileage. Now, if you tune your engine up and you're like, oh, baby, oh, baby, let's rock, let's rock, you're gonna get bad fuel mileage and you're gonna burn your engine up. But anyway, so I have those two things, the break-in and the tuner, okay? So once they get in, once the break-in happens, we get that tuner in, and I, he said, uh, Jared down there told me 10,000 miles, you can put that, that program in your computer and uh, start to reap the benefits. So very soon, we'll put that in. I can't wait, it's the same program that I have in my other truck, and that thing just gets phenomenal fuel mileage. So I'm hoping to be not only seven, empty with this. I'm hoping to be in the upper sevens empty, but we'll see how uh, how that progresses. And I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop because this year, like I mentioned, it's all about efficiency. So uh, let's just say, for the sake of saying, that I only get 6.6 .6 and that's all that I do. I know that loaded, the way that I drive, I'm never going to get less than probably 5.1, 5.2 on like my worst, worst day. So if I'm getting 6.6 .6. and on my worst day I'm gonna let's just say average-ish I'm gonna get 5.3 loaded um, that's gonna put me at about 5.9 6 flat for an average and that's if the fuel mileage never gets a drop better but I'm here to tell you that it will so we'll see how that goes most guys hauling cattle uh, with their you know long nose peaks and Kenworths and whatnot they're they're getting about four Probably three, eight to four or five for the most part. Some of them will tell you that they do a little better than that, but they're just teasing you. <laughs> oh, burn! That's a burn to you, uh, <laughs> to you guys. You know it. You know who you are, and you'll laugh at that. Don't worry. Anyway, um, I'm just about back home, and uh, I made it in time for Freddy's game. In fact, I still have an hour and a half to spare, if you can believe that. I'm definitely back in the cow haul mode. I'm ready to rip this thing. First load of cows out the gate, of first official scheduled cattle going to the Midwest is gonna be a week from today, next Friday. Uh, we're going to Kansas, so excited to, uh, excited to do that. I got some work to do on this trailer. I gotta still put tires on it. I gotta do the light deal and uh, just a couple other little 
little housekeeping things, nothing serious. Uh, we're gonna get that rocking and rolling. But you guys, I hope you enjoyed a quick little journey with me down the road. I'll keep you apprised. You're gonna see a lot more of this trailer. This is gonna be what I haul. Last thing that I'm gonna answer for you, I did weigh this truck and trailer. Um, it weighs 35,000 pounds empty and totally full of fuel. What does that mean to most of you? Nothing. Uh, I'll translate it for you. It means that legally I can haul a 54,000 pound load, totally, perfectly legal. But, <laughs> I shouldn't say there's a way around that. Uh, that was full of fuel, so if I run a little lighter on fuel, that'll bump me up to 55,000 pounds. And uh, another thing about cattle is as you go down the road, they get smaller and your weight gets lighter and lighter. So you load, let's just say 54,000 pounds in Montana, time you get to Nebraska, it's gonna weigh 51,000 pounds. So if you formulate that a little bit, kind of roll the dice, I'm gonna load probably 57, 58,000 pounds in Montana, play with my fuel a little bit, let those cattle shrink, and that's a pretty good payload. So. Follow along, there's gonna be a whole lot more cattle hauling adventures. I've got some new equipment so I can mount some GoPro itch. Uh, you're gonna be able to see a lot more of the cow hauling, the loading, the unloading, the washing out, the midnight drives, all that stuff. I hope that grabbing this trailer has got you guys as pumped up as it does me. I'm ready for the fall run. Where's the cows? Let's go.